nice early morning in the fruit forest. Sun is just coming up and we've opened some of the swimming pools water for the ducks. Fill up this iPad. We are enjoying the new life. See that pretty pear sprouting. Spackboom. Elephant tree coming up here. These things are filled with vitamins. Loads of vitamin C in them. But sour. So this morning we're expanding our spackboom hedgerow. Elephant tree. I'll put the biological name in the description. Um, so this is the previous one that we planted. We haven't seen any new sprouts, but this is only a week old. Um, let me just check here. Okay, so nothing yet. What I would do differently than this, though, is I would place them flat, like that. That was the original idea. The guys just misunderstood me. But this is the correct way to plant the spackboom. You let them dry for a week or two, and you scar them. If they have scars like that, you place them flat. And uh, everywhere that there is a scar, or sometimes even when there is a node, that is where the roots will pop out. You get a lot smaller trees to begin with, but you have a much longer um, root system. And in the long run, that is what we want. So before I tell you about this Kingelia Africana sausage tree that we got today, quickly just want to show you how many meters we ended up planting. So there's a fig over here and then the guys planted sausage tree ach spackboom all the way over here now here you can't see them as clearly but you can see every year and there you see a little stick sticking out and that means that uh, most of it is buried underground just the way i wanted it i think this way we will have more coming up and uh, a better hedge with a better foundation Right, let's come go back to the Kingelia Africana quickly. This was sponsored to, by, to us. They just wanted to buy me a coffee. She bought us three coffees and then by Brett, who said, uh, I received a message last night in the middle of the night. Have you ever thought about Kingelia Africana? I think this would be a fantastic tree for your site. And so I know, knew about the tree. I saw them when I grew up. But after he mentioned the name, I went and I did some studies. And this is actually a fantastic tree. It's got um, lots of medicinal properties, obviously as well, but it's fantastic for riverbank stabilization. I'll leave a, a, a link to an article below. Um, and then it's also green very often, makes these huge fruits, makes fantastic shade, and it's almost first to be green in the winter. The other thing that I did with the money that they sent with the coffee, buy me a coffee thing, is we bought these various seeds, um, these butternuts, sorghum sudan, which we will be planting around here and then later on we'll be planting that on the swales. Then we got um, cow candy, last year we had cow candy but we didn't plant it at the right places I believe. And then we've got this little green Hubert but, uh, pumpkin thingy. Now we haven't planted that but last year we had so many butternuts that we fed everybody's families and their families as well with butternuts. Watching my channel for a bit, you know that we've been, we rescued these donkeys from the uh, highway a while ago. And uh, they are finally leaving tomorrow, but I want to show you something interesting that they've been doing now over the last couple of days. And uh, I always thought that goats, sorry, I want to change this for the sun, that goats was probably the most destructive animal on earth when not managed properly but uh, I can tell you these donkeys obviously we gave them grass as much as they can eat but they eat like I cannot believe how much a donkey can eat and uh, yeah, they, they eat thorn branches they eat they eat everything and then yesterday the day before yesterday we got in here the guy said let me go and show you something and they showed me this. Let me show you. Now, about a week ago, I saw the first one and I thought, yeah, these donkeys are lastig. I cannot imagine they're doing that. And then, over the last couple of days, look, between the thorns here, they stripped all of that bark from that thorn tree, even between the thorns there. 
they they they're probably hundreds of these trees now i really really do hope that all of these trees survive but i mean look at this imagine something doing this to a tree just eating all of the bark now these bloody donkeys you see them and they chow on i'll show you the kind of thorn trees that they are eating look at this all of this damage but they will stand and it's not like they're discriminating this is a completely different kind of tree as well they don't discriminate look at all those empty trees there they would stand here and they would eat these fawns can you imagine that so growing up with horses i always thought you know well, donkeys are like little horses that's just more stubborn it's not the same thing at all first of all they've got three times the personality of a donkey these donkeys are genuinely happy when they see us they come running they make the donkey noises horses don't do that the way donkeys do they they show so much emotion and they are not only more stubborn they are extremely hardy they will eat bloody well anything you can imagine so we have got this um, black tribe in the movie called the damaras and they've got their own um, land called Damara land and uh, when you go in there you drive between the farms mostly white owned and then it's always eye striking the last white farm you pass when you enter into Damara land there's a little cattle grid on this side there's grass and trees and then when you go into the other side it's basically donkeys ah basically desert empty no grass trees are empty everything is eaten now I always believe believed that it is um, the tragedy of the commons that, you know everybody can graze everywhere this land belongs to everybody so if you don't eat ev any if you don't let your animals eat the last piece of grass somebody else will and it still might be true it still might be the tragedy of the commons but it also might be the fact that this tribe this tribe is famous for their love of donkeys so maybe it's because of all the donkeys that they have that their land looks like a desert. So while I show you this speck boom, it's been growing quite nicely between the onions here. Um, we want to take the time to thank everybody for the comments. I actually really enjoy doing the things that's on the comments. Um, I've been vlogging now daily for quite a while and reading the comments at night and trying to see how I can incorporate that into the next video and see how I can incorporate that into the food forest and learning the new things whenever you guys say you know have you heard about whatever whether it's Debra or whether it's Porsche or whether it's Steve everybody that leaves a comment I really do appreciate it and I go and I study these things and I learn daily so much um, so thank you I work for comments leave a comment and have a blessed day I'll see you tomorrow